Our brains are fantastic, but it is helpful to give it strategies to help us with maths problems. In this video, we're going to be looking at a strategy which will help us to subtract things mentally. This strategy is especially helpful when we're doing more tricky subtraction problems later on. Our learning intention for today is that we are learning to use efficient mental strategies for subtraction. Today's strategy is subtraction in two parts. I have got the number eight here, and I'm representing it with eight MAB blocks, but I could actually also describe that as three blocks and five blocks. I can split numbers up and I can use that to my advantage. Let's say we have 53 minus eight. We could count backwards, but things do get a little tricky when we're no longer in the 50s and we have to go down to the 40s. What we can do is to break this eight into two parts. Let's see what that might actually look like. Okay, so I have got 53 minus eight, and I've got 53 represented with MAB blocks, so I've got five groups of 10 and three groups of units, and I need to take away these in this red box. They're in the red box just to let you know that I need to take that many out of here. Now, just looking at this go, oh, I could do that. I could count eight of them and get rid of them, but it's gonna be a little bit easier in my mind if I break this eight into smaller bits. What am I gonna break it into? Well, numbers become much more easy to deal with when we round them to the nearest 10. We don't actually have to round here, but I want to take away first these three extra ones so that I'm just dealing with 50. What do I do for that? I need to break this eight into a group of three so that I cancel out those three and a group of five. So now I've got a group, now I've got 53 minus three minus five. So what that's gonna do here is that I am going to be able to can't take these three away. So I'm, that actually means that I'm taking these three away, which I can then, I've dealt with that. So now I can use my number facts, my friends of 10, whatever you want to call two numbers that add together to get to 10 to solve this a little bit easier. First of all, I'm to show this visually, I'm going to change one of these long ones into 10 units because this is just 10. So let's do that. And there we go. Now we've changed this to 10 units, which is exactly the same, except I can detach them a little bit easier. And then I just take five, 10 minus five is five. So I take away those five and now I'm left with a nice easy number to deal with, 45. So by breaking my steps down a little bit, it makes things a little bit more simple. Let's do one without the MAB blocks. So let's try another problem. Let's try 64 minus eight. I would like to know what 64 minus eight is. I could count backwards. That's not the most efficient strategy. More efficient would be to split this eight into two bits, which makes it a little bit easier. So I would like to split it into two bits, which will first one will give us 60. So I know if I take four away from 64, I will be left with 60. So I need to break this into two numbers. One of them needs to be four, then four, plus something to get to eight, four plus four is eight. So I will, 64 minus four minus four, because these two are the eight. I'm still taking away eight, I'm just taking it away four twice now. What does that equal? Well, uh, that now I like to work down my page. So 64 minus four, let's just deal with that first, is 60. And now I've get, gotten rid of that four, so now I've just got this four left. So I've gotten rid of that four, now I've just got this four, 60 minus four, is, well, I know that 10 minus four is six, so 60 minus four must be 56. And it really is as simple as that. Let's do one more just to be sure. Let's do 72 minus five. I would like to get to 70 first. I need to split the five into two numbers. When I take one of them away from 72, I'll be left with 70, because we want to deal with nice round numbers that are multiples of 10. That's nice and easy to deal with. So I know that one of them is going to be two because if I take two away from 72, I'm going to be left with 70. And so that means that I need to split five into where one is two. So the other one must be there for three because uh, two plus three is five or five minus two is three. Okay, so let's do that. So seven, so I'm gonna split it up a little bit. So 72 minus, 
And I want to split up this five. And so I want to split up the five. And so I would like one of them to be two. And I would also like one of them to be three because it still needs to be five. So two plus three is five. But I've put a, a minus here because I'm still taking five away. So I've taken two, then I'm taking three from 72. So now I'm going to keep working down the page. I would like to take two from 72 first. I can do that. So 72 minus two is 70. Then I, I, so I've dealt with this two here. So now I, I need to deal with the three. So I'm going to write that. This is a separate step. And now that's nice and easy. 70 minus three, I know 10 minus three is seven. So 70 th minus three is 67. So it's important to remember when splitting numbers that we get our original number, the number that we are subtracting from to a multiple of 10. When I say multiple of 10, I mean a number that has a zero at the end because we're pretty familiar with our facts to 10. So our addition facts, our pairs of numbers, which when we're added together, give us 10. So that makes, just makes it a little bit more simple for our brains. Let's do a worded problem. Johan had 65 footy cards. He gave nine to his friend. How many cards does Johan have now? So he starts with 65. So I would like to write down 65 here. So we're starting with 65, then he takes away nine. And I wanna find what happens when I take nine away from 65. I could count backwards. That's not the most efficient strategy though. I'd like to get to a multiple of 10. So I need to take five away. So I need to split nine into two numbers, one of which will be five. So let's do that. So I'll split nine into five because I need to take five away from 65 to get to 60. And the difference, the leftovers will be four. So 65 minus five equals, and I'm going to come up here so I don't run out of space. And so now I can multiply, now I can take five away from 65, which will be 60 minus four now, because we've dealt with this five, we still need to take away the four. So we have mul minus, or subtracted five from 65 to get a 60. Now I need to deal with the four. So now I just go 60 minus four. Well, 10 minus four is six. So 60 minus four is 56. I could, if I wanted to draw this out on a number line, I could, if I wanted to use MAB blocks or counters, but this works pretty well. And this is a fantastic strategy for solving simple problems like we have here. Being practiced in this strategy will help us to do mental and written calculations more quickly. And it's even more helpful when we move on to more challenging problems. This will always be a helpful strategy. In this video, we have looked at subtracting in parts to help us solve simple problems, which will help us to solve more complex problems.